I'm Connor. I'm the producer for this show, and I want to introduce you guys to an awesome team that's been working to put this show together for you tonight. Hey, I'm Ryan. I'm Emma. Hi, I'm Hannah. I'm the director for tonight's show, but you won't see me on stage. I'll be backstage helping our special guests and making sure that nobody says anything stupid. I'm looking at you, Josiah. I'm the assistant producer. I'll be sitting back there at the tech table. I'm controlling everything you see on these screens. These screens right here. I'm the team lead for Late Night Live. I'm so excited for our show tonight. Just a couple of things before we start. Be sure to silence your cell phones, but don't turn them off because you will need them later. There are signs indicating each of the sections and rows. If you're still having trouble finding your seat, there are ushers around to help you. Last, I just need to share my excitement. We have some amazing special guests in this show tonight. We're so excited for you to hear their stories and to be entertained and to laugh with us. So sit back, relax, and enjoy the show. <laughs> it could be. Okay. Live from Overland Park, it's SPO. We'd have to make it kind of like that, right? Okay, you slide up a little bit. You, you slide up a little bit. One okay. person say live from Overland Park, and then the rest we say. It's late night live. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, okay, just, I'm just gonna throw this out there. Do it. I may can this whole thing. The okay. whole thing. If it just doesn't, if it's not the yeah. vibe, but I think it's worth trying. All right. <laughs> you mean this part or like the whole The whole, whole thing. Okay. Definitely this That's part. That's great to know. <laughs> Basically, based on what I've done so far, no. Connor, Connor has decided. No, this just thing saying, I think it's just gotta be the right vibe. No, it's yeah. gotta be the right vibe. And live from Overland Park, it's Late Night Live! Wait, wait, wait. We also have dessert and champagne after the show, so don't leave early. Stick around to the end, it's gonna be awesome. This is amazing. So, like I said, um, Minnesota native, but I, I served down here in Kansas City for, for four years. And um, like anybody moving to a new place, right, when you get there, you, you usually don't really know where you are, right? You're, you're using Google Maps and whatever, you're trying to figure out your way around. One thing in particular that's confusing is Kansas City's right on state line, right? And so you never really knew, right, am I, am I on the Kansas side or am I on the Missouri side? So it was after about a year, I think I kind of figured out, like, okay, I'm, I'm starting to see a pattern. I realized that if I'm having fun and I'm at like maybe like a fun, like a cool bar or like an interesting coffee shop or restaurant or something, I'm in Missouri, right? That's guaranteed, guaranteed Missouri. But conversely, I might be a little bored, but if I feel safe, I'm in Kansas, that's for sure. All right. Now, to be fair, one time that did get a little confusing. I was, I was at this restaurant with some of my friends, and I was having fun, and I definitely didn't feel safe. And I was like, I don't think I'm in Missouri, though. You know, like, we'd, we'd kind of driven kind of far, and I, and I was looking around, and I was like, oh, my bartender didn't really have any teeth. And I was like, I'm in Arkansas, duh. But without further ado, let's give it up for Ali Aaliyah.
All right, so um, we're going to invite up our first guest tonight. Our first guest is the president and founder of SBO, Gordy Deem. Right, Gordy is a family man. He's, he was also my wrestling coach in high school. Um, so that's a little known fact about him. Um, but he's a wonderful man who's been laying down his life for the church um, since, I don't know how old he is, but like since the dark ages. So uh, without further ado, Gordy DeMarais. You know, when SPO began, we, we, uh, we had a couple scriptures that were sort of our key scriptures. One was from Psalm 127, unless the Lord build the house, we labor in vain. Mm -hmm. The other was from John chapter 15, Ab abide in me and remain in me. Um, for apart from me, you, you can bear no fruit. And I, I think if I were to say anything, that's, that's what we need to be today. We need to be people who open our lives to the, the incredible love that the Father has for us, remain in him and abide in him. And that's, that's the way I need to live today as, as, as much as ever because it's really about him and his work and us being docile to his grace in our life. Please help me welcome up Archbishop Nauman. These next questions are a little bit of a pivot. We call these hot seat questions. Are you, <laughs> are you okay with these? Um, you're from, we're doing them anyways. We're, so you're from St. Louis originally, right? Yeah. Uh, so are you a Cardinals or a Royals fan? Yes. Okay. <laughs> okay. Interesting. So like, they're both kind of your favorite? Yeah, yes, it's only a problem with interleague play. Yeah, okay, yeah. okay, okay. Uh, are, are you a barbecue fan? Do you like barbecue? Yes. Okay, yes, Kansas City has amazing barbecue. Do you have a favorite spot? Yes, uh, Jack Stack. All right, all right, thank you. Not a sponsor. Well, actually, it is a sponsor. I shouldn't say that. I do believe they're a sponsor. I apologize. Um, Jack Stack is great. Anyways. It is. Uh, Kansas City, hot spot for breweries and interesting coffee shops, beer or coffee? Neither. All right, okay. <laughs> Water, <laughs> whiskey. It's, a, it's between Dr. Pepper and nice. what they used to call Mr. Pibb. But it's yeah, only yeah, 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 yeah. I yeah. saw that once in like a textbook. <laughs> yeah, that was cool. Um, great. Uh, and then... Uh, if, you have, if you have a free day off, which I assume doesn't happen, but if you did, where would you imagine you would like to go or what you would like to do? So when I was younger, I, I loved to play sports, sure. uh, racquetball and tennis, uh, basketball, but uh, those days are behind me. So I love to, if I have a chance to go to live theater um, and... Yeah, we, a couple months ago, uh, we got to see The Great Divorce at C.S. Lewis at the oh, Coffin yeah. Center, which was really good. And my favorite musical is Les Miserables. Mm-hmm. All right. It's, it's one of the few uh, plays that really portrays a bishop in a positive light. Sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Our next guest... Uh, are directing the mission here in Kansas City. I had the pleasure of working with both of them, actually, when I was down here. Um, they, they truly are transformational leaders, and they're spearheading a lot of really new things in the church and in SPO down here. So without further ado, please welcome up Nick Red and Bridget Pinsano. Go SPO has kind of rediscovered this call to plant missional communities yeah. in cities around the world. We're not even limiting us to the U.S. with this vision. And it's not just college work. And it's not just young adult work. That's like yeah. the next frontier, I believe. But it's all of our life. And, and I started hearing about this, and I started seeing this vision, mm -hmm. and I thought, that's something I can give my life to. Mm -hmm. That's something I can sell it all and buy the field. And we're really like learning how do we live as a community on mission, mm -hmm. um, and not just for a season of our lives, but for the rest of our lives. You know, we're about building missional communities and cities. Mm -hmm. And so we have these kind of transitional phases of campus life and young adult life, and then and beyond. And so mm. we're really setting people up for how do we live this for the rest of our lives. Right. Uh, so this game is called Ugly Baby Animal Edition. Don't worry, Animal Edition. So, no. <laughs> um, great. So how this game's going to work is I'm going to put, not me personally, but there will be a picture of an animal put up on the screen, right? And it'll be an adult animal. And what you're going to have to do is guess whether or not its baby is ugly or cute, 
right? Easy enough. Now, we're going to try and whittle people down because we want to find out who the winners are, right? We're not millennials, so we're trying to figure out not everybody wins. So, if it's cute, I want you to put your hands on your head, right? If it's cute, put your hands on your head. And if it's ugly, put them on your hips, right? Your hips. You're going to put your hands <laughs> on your hips. All right. Um, you guys, you're not going to get out because it would just be embarrassing if you're just, okay. just right. sitting there. Yeah. So you just yep. keep playing. Okay. Show us what to do. Um, if you do get out, you're going to have to sit down. This is an eye eye. Uh, eye eyes are from Madagascar, and they use percussive foraging, which is where they tap their finger on trees to find out if there's bugs in it, right? Um, you do that, don't you, Nick? Yeah, regularly. Yeah, okay, sweet. So, uh, hands on your head if you think it is cute, hands on your hips if you think the baby is ugly. Now I feel like show you me. Go opposite. I'll go, you, you, you go. You, what do you got to do? Yeah, I'll go. go okay. okay. All right, show me that baby. Oh, it is very hideous. It is very hideous. Is that cute or ugly? That is very is, ugly. Is it okay. Ugly? Can you so I don't know. when I was doing this, I thought that he kind <laughs> of looked like, like Doc cute. Brown. Can you show the next picture? Doesn't that kind of look similar? <laughs> <laughs> Can you go back to the first one? No, sorry, the second one. Show me the other one. Yeah, right? Yeah, like yeah, it's Doc Brown. Good. Okay, cool. This is, as you can see, uh, a perfect replica of an SPO household. Um, we have three chairs. Um, these ones match. That's different than my house. Um, we have a full set of pans that aren't scratched at the bottom uh, with the Teflon coming off, so that's nice. Uh, and a healthy breakfast of Cheerios and Fruit Loops. That's actually pretty accurate. And Mission Toastia, or Mission like chips from uh, uh, Aldi. That's pretty accurate as well. Okay, so. Um, we're going to welcome up uh, one of our, our missionaries who's serving here and, and actually just hear a little bit about her testimony and, and how she came to kind of be serving with SPO. Uh, Brittany is an amazing young woman. Um, she's been serving with SPO for the last two years. She went to Rockhurst University. Um, and she just had a baby, like, and she's here tonight, right? So that's really impressive. Not like just like, you know, but two months ago. It's still very impressive. So. Uh, please help me welcome up Brittany Ginzel. Yeah. I was so lonely. No one knew me. No one knew the desires of my heart. I knew that there was more to life. I'd, ha I'd experienced deep relationship back in high school, and I knew it was in Jesus. I had no idea where to find it. How did the connection to SPO happen? So my now husband, uh, at the time we were not even dating, but he'd invited me to a Royals baseball game with the SPO crew. Yes. Um, and I remember meeting the community and just experiencing just a lot of joy. Um, and there's particularly one woman, her name is Jillian, she was a missionary at the time, and we just hit it off. And yeah, I walked away thinking, I wanna be friends with her. I, I wanna be connected to this community. Sweet, so one Royals game, and it was fixed? Like you were, <laughs> this is how you are now, right? I, I don't think I would say it that way. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I, I mean, to be perfectly honest, I was a little hesitant about SPO. Um, yeah, they just, they prayed a little bit differently than I was used to. I grew up mm -hmm. really traditional, and so, um, yeah, I was, I was pretty hesitant. But, yeah, there was an openness because of the attractiveness to the community that I saw that was stirred within my heart where I was like, mm -hmm. okay, I, I think I want this even though I'm unsure about it. And really, it actually paved the way and prepared my heart for an, an encounter I had the following summer. Um, I went with, at the time, my boyfriend's family to this Holy Spirit conference that was on Pentecost weekend. Hmm. And yeah, there was a point in time where you could get prayed over. And there was something that was in my heart that I never told anyone on the face of the earth. And when I was getting prayed over, there, the people praying over me ended up experiencing um, 
yeah, just these words from the Lord, the, these encouragement that all pinpointed this one struggle that I had. Hmm. And it was in that moment where I encountered the Father's love in a way I had never encountered it before. And yeah, it was in that moment I, I felt so seen by him and I realized I, I could never earn this. Mm -hmm. Like I, I'm loved beyond anything I can imagine simply because I'm his daughter. And it was from that point where there was something unlocked within, within me. There was a hunger for scripture, zeal for mission, growth, um, and an openness to the Holy Spirit that I had never encountered before. And so really I would say that was kind of the turning point in my conversion. But if it weren't for SPO preparing my heart up until that point, I don't think sure. it would have happened. Yeah, the, the, the story we've been telling tonight um, really isn't just like a generic SPO story, the story of a, a student encountering the Lord um, through SPO and, and, and their life changing. Um, it, it is a story that, that a lot of people in SPO have experienced, but it's also my story too. And, and, and my experience was I was probably a lot like either you were or, or maybe your kids are or will be in college or growing up had a really strong moral background. Um, my parents were awesome parents. And, and I came into college uh, with a decision to make. How was I gonna live my life, right? Who was I gonna be? And out of the options I was given, the one that was in line with how I'd been raised, that wasn't really the one that I wanted to choose. I mean, what the other things just looked really good. And, and it wasn't all at one moment or anything like that. Um, I mean, in my experience, it, it was kind of these, I would kind of ask these questions of myself, like, is it really like that bad, you know, if I was given an option for something? Or, you know, well, I, I know that guy did it and he seems to be all right. And, but like slowly, who I was raised to be and, and, and the man that my parents had, had tried to instill in me that moral compass was just kind of slowly eroded. And, and it reached a point where I, I remember thinking that like if I ran into the guy that I was supposed to be like on the street, like I wouldn't really be able to like look him in the eye, right? Like I, I just knew that I wasn't who I was made to be. And, and, and actually after a little while, I started even thinking like maybe I wasn't even made to be that guy. Maybe that guy's too far out of reach now. Like, is there, is there a way I can come back? And it was at that pivotal moment that the Lord broke into my life through these four guys at the University of St. Thomas. You can name Ryan, Ben, Jake, and Joe. And, and these guys came around me and walked with me through those moments and, and reminded me not only of the man that I could be, and, and who I was made to be, but, but gave me the environment that actually allowed me to live that, right? It wasn't just, to, like, I knew what was wrong, but they actually gave me a space where, where I could pursue that and grow in my character and in my strength and my relationship with the Lord. And the crazy thing about those guys is none of them were missionaries. They were all students. They were all guys who had encountered the Lord through SPO and were sharing with me the, the life that they had experienced. And I got caught up in that. And so that's like, that's what we're talking about tonight. We're not talking just about specialists, like going out into the field and saving the day. But we're talking about a work that the Lord is doing through a community of people that creates freedom for young men and young women to live out fully the life that they're, they're called to live. So tonight we're, we're here for two reasons, right? One is to celebrate the work that the Lord is doing and has done through SPO. But we're, we're also here because we need your support. I don't actually really know another way to say it other than like we need your help. Your donations and your support are pivotal for us to be able to do what we want to do. Please 
help me welcome up, she's already here, the wonderful Ali Aaliyah. Thank you guys so much. God bless you guys. Have a great night.